Happy Monday to you. Welcome back out to the front porch. Time once again for another episode of Monday Meditations. Today we're going to be continuing and concluding chapter 18 of the book of Proverbs. Continuing to look at that wisdom literature. The Proverbs letter is, is a profound letter of many short pithy statements, but of of eternal truths because it's inspired of God the wise man encouraging us to seek wisdom in this life and our relationships and that's what we're going to talk about in the last three verses of Proverbs chapter 18 we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 24 and keeping in mind that idea of relationships and how important those relationships are in this world but ultimately the most important relationship is our relationship with God it has an impact on, on every relationship that we have and how we're going to treat one another is going to be a lot tied to how we treat God and His Word and what He tells us. And so as we look at Proverbs chapter 18, verses 22 through 24, let's focus on, first of all, the relationship of marriage. As you look at verse 22, he says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. When you think about that idea, whoso findeth a wife, there's differing views on that. Is he talking about a good wife or is he talking about a wife in general? Seems quite fitting that you would say he's talking about a good wife, especially when you consider other passages in this same book, the book of Proverbs. If you would go back to chapter 12 with me, Proverbs chapter 12, look at verse 4. It says, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is rottenness in his bones. Again, there's a virtuous woman. In chapter 19, the next chapter, verse 14 says, House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. So again, there's that idea of a, of a good wife. Or you know, the most famous is that in Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. The virtuous woman, her price is far above rubies. And her husband trusts in her and has confidence in her. Her children rise up. They call her blessed. That's the kind of wife that really one should be seeking. And if, if, if this is Solomon writing to his son, and you know what Solomon did with too many wives, too many concubines, and how they turned his heart from God. If this is Solomon talking to his son, wouldn't he be encouraging him to find a good wife? Whoso findeth a wife finds a good, though. You go back to the beginning in the creation. God ordained the first marriage when he put Eve there with Adam. He joined them together as husband and wife, and he took a rib from Adam's side. Not a bone from his head to rule over him, or not a, a bone from his foot to be trampled on, but from his side to be a help that was suitable. He didn't say that it's it's terrible and it's never the case that a man should be single. He said it's not good for a man to be alone, the only one of his kind. There's a blessing in having a godly spouse, whether it's a godly man as a husband or a godly woman as a wife. When you look at that idea of marriage, we need to be looking at what can we bring to the table. If I'm the man that God created me to be, then I can be the husband that that wife deserves for me to be. But there are situations in this world where it's, it's necessary, it's needful for a man or a woman to be single. And unscriptural divorces and things of this nature. Those are reasons. Other reasons you could look at Jesus himself when he chose flesh. He, he didn't take a physical wife to his side. No, he, he chose the life of celibacy and a life that was single to focus on the mission that was ahead of him of seeking and saving the lost. His bride, of course, we know as the church, the bride of Christ being the church. Or the Apostle Paul is an example. He would even make the statement that it was lawful, it was right, that he could lead about a wife, as did Peter, but he chose not to for the gospel's sake. And it was needful for him to stay in that situation. You go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and he says that it's, it's better for them in the church in Corinth to remain as he was because of the present distress. And that was, of course, single. But we can't have it that way for everyone. If all mankind stayed single, there would be no reproduction. There would be no cre procreation in the, the life as we know it. Humanity would end. It would cease. But there's more to it than just procreation. It's a blessing from God for a godly man and a godly woman under the, the direction of Scripture to join themselves together in holy matrimony. One man, one woman, for life. God's plan, God's way, he set it up. Let's trust God and understand when man finds a wife, a good wife, he's a good man, finds a good wife, he obtains favor of the Lord. There's the blessing in that. 
the favorable look of God upon that relationship. But God doesn't look favorably upon sin. We need to remind ourselves of that in this process that we're talking about. So God's word is dictating. God's word is, is giving us encouragement and strength and understanding on how these relationships should be. Be seeking a godly mate. Be, be, be a godly person before you seek that godly mate as well. Verse 23 says, The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. Often it's the case that with the poor, that's all they have left. Or this idea of entreaties is, is an, carries a, a concept of begging even, of pleading, and, and of soft words in that. I don't have, I, I can't provide, and I need things. And I'm going to come at this, because if he's a poor person, he's going to come at this with a humility of begging somewhat. But the rich, different story. The rich sometimes answer roughly. Now, again, these are proverbs. Not every situation, not er not every rich person is this way. Not every poor person is this way. You got to understand that when we're reading the proverbs. So many times it is the case, though, with the rich that they're trusting in their riches. They may be very congenial with one another in their own circles, but then you find them dealing with someone who they view a little lesser than themselves. They may be more harsh and answer roughly, as he says here. They don't see their need for other people because they're trusting in their riches. And that's a sad to know. Now you think about Solomon, who, who had more wealth than is imaginable even. He didn't withhold anything from his eye. If he wanted it, he bought it. And he understands maybe there were some times in his life that he, he talked roughly with others. And he's encouraging his son, learn from my mistakes. Then verse 24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Age old statement that we, we, we understand that concept. We understand the concept. Practicing it may be a little bit difficult at times, but if you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. This goes back to even the principle that Jesus set forth in the Sermon on the Mount, the golden rule of the Bible. Whatsoever you would that men do unto you, do you even so to them. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And so if you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. Other translations word it a little bit differently and carry an idea of having too many friends can sometimes cause us some trouble as well. And maybe it's an idea of looking for that one genuine friend. But it's a little difficult when you look at the context of this. Who is this friend that sticks closer than a brother? Well, there's some individuals that can can fall into that role, but ultimately, it, wouldn't that be Jesus? I mean, you think about that, if you, you know, wonder about that, go to John chapter 15 with me. John chapter 15, let's start with verse 12. He says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. He talks about in verse 15, I call you not servants, for the servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but, but I call you friends because I've revealed unto you what is needful. Now, this is that friend that sticks closer than a brother because he was willing to lay down his life for us. Romans 5 verse 8 teaches us he did so while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. When you think about that kind of a friend, that's that's should motivate us and encourage us to be that type of friend as well. If a man would have friends, he must show himself friendly. But don't forget that genuine friend of Jesus who sticks closer than a brother. It'll help us in our relationships if we're practicing that kind of love. A new commandment give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you and that you love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one toward another, Jesus would say, John chapter 13, looking at that concept of loving as he loved, it's going to impact our relationships, whether it be as a husband or a wife, whether it be as a rich man or a poor man, whether it be as a friend in this world. Love as Jesus loved. Focus on the genuine friend of God, friendship with God, first and foremost. Married to Christ as a member of his church, first and foremost. Being poor, spiritually speaking, and rich, or being poor physically speaking is okay. Be poor, uh, spiritually speaking, is a, is a hindrance to our eternal destiny. But being rich, spiritually speaking, doesn't give us the right to talk roughly to others. 
because we're supposed to love as he loved. We think about these things and we process the Proverbs. Remember, they're Proverbs. Remember, these are statements that are meant to help give us wisdom, to teach us to be married to that wisdom, to be married to Christ, to be focused on the things that truly matter in this world so we get to enjoy the blessings that he's prepared for us in the next. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again.